Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, tonight, we're going to have a presentation called Applying to College 101. Um, my name is Amanda Shaw. I'm one of the school counselors at Conan High School and Jaffrey Ridge Middle School. Um, we also have um, Timothy Robertson, who is our other counselor um, at for Conan High School and Jaffrey Ridge Middle School. Um, so I have, um, so if you have students in grades um, 11 and 12 right now, um, that they'd be on my caseload. Any students in grades um, nine and 10, um, Mr. Robertson has them. So tonight we have um, our wonderful NEAF rep, Moira Valenti. Um, and if you don't know what NEAF stands for, it's the New Hampshire um, Higher Education Assistance Foundation. So they're a nonprofit organization in Concord um, and they do all sorts of free programming in high schools throughout New Hampshire for college planning, financial aid planning. Um, and they also meet with families one-on-one um, -on -one to do the same thing. So tonight we're just gonna, we're gonna talk about um, this, the beginning of applying to college. So if you're a junior right now or a parent of a junior, that's kind of what you might be starting to think about. If you're like a freshman or a sophomore, maybe starting to think about it a little bit, but either way, this is all good information. So I'm gonna turn it over to Moira. All right, I am going to share my screen. Hopefully, this is always like the moment of truth. Let's see here. <laughs> All right, are you seeing my screen? Yes. Very exciting. All right, then. Let's see here. So the Center for College Planning is part of NEAF, as Amanda was just telling you about that. So we do offer presentations. I will be back in the fall. And we're going to think optimistically, I'm going to be there in person in the fall. We're going to do this in the music room next year. Um, and I will do the financial aid presentation, talk about filing the FAFSA and things like that. We do college counseling appointments. We will have a lot going on this summer for both students and parents. So tune in, check our website in May. There'll be a lot of great information there. So really in this process, it's very important that the student take the lead and kind of drive the process. Um, and I know that's not necessarily the most comfortable place to be for a lot of students who are juniors and seniors, but it's just really important that they be aware of all of the paperwork and everything that's going on. And when you're communicating with a college, they really wanna hear from the student. So completely fine for mom or dad to ask questions or wanna be a part of the conversation, but the student should be the one introducing themselves and kind of taking the lead. It's going to impress the college admissions counselor. The other side of that is then you start to get used to that transition from high school to college where the college is going to communicate only with the student where high school, obviously parents have access to a lot of information as well. I have two kids in college myself and I'm still getting used to that. Um, the fact that the bill goes to my daughter, if there's a question with her FAFSA, they go to my daughter, you know, that type of thing. So it's just really important to realize that once they're in college, they will be dealing with all of this paperwork. There are many different factors that are going to go into choosing the college that is right for you and even the path that is right for you. So do you want to stay close to home? Do you wanna be a car ride away, a plane ride away, that type of thing? Do you like a small school, a large school? The best thing you can do when it's safe or when you feel comfortable is to physically get on college campuses and see what may be a good fit for you because a lot of things can sound good in theory or even look good on a virtual tour, but you're not going to know if it's the place for you until you're physically walking around the campus. Internships and co-ops, they're definitely gonna be available at every college. If you know what you're interested in, you could even be asking now, who do you partner with in the community for internships? So that's a question when you get out of college and you're looking for a job, it's not going to just be about having that college diploma. It's also going to be about what experience did you get outside of the classroom. So they are going to be looking for that as well. And then any networking that you do, if you have an internship, it might be that person that hires you when you get out of college or maybe that person's friend or, you know, that type of thing. So the networking aspect of that is important as well. 
60% of students today go into college undecided. And frankly, sometimes that's a lot easier uh, because they do figure it out when they get there. The statistic is that students who go into college and declare a major change it three times. So either way, you wanna make sure you're keeping an open mind. You wanna make sure you choose a school that has a few things that you're interested in and that you're not going to a school just because of one academic program. You wanna look a little bit more big picture than that. Colleges do a great job these days, especially freshman year of having students take a couple of different classes that really introduce them to many different subjects, many different professors, and it makes it much easier to kind of get on the path that you're meant to be on and to figure out what you wanna major in once you're there. I will show you a link in just a second for a virtual college fair that is coming up the first weekend in May. But again, when you have the chance or when it makes sense, you do want to get onto the college campuses and take a tour, go to an info session, um, an open house, anything like that to get a sense of the campus. The great thing about when you talk to an admissions rep, whether it's at the college itself, at a college fair, or if it's somebody who comes to Kona next year and is talking to students, the representative from that college that you meet is probably the person making the decision about whether or not you get into that college. So it's important to know that going in, uh, ask a couple of questions, introduce yourself. And again, you'll have that connection. You'll be able to email them if you have questions, but they'll recognize your name when it comes across um, with the applications. So you will have a connection there. Okay, so obviously a lot of these have passed. So that very last one, May 2nd, virtualcollegefairs.org slash events. They're actually really cool to experience um, because there are so many colleges that are there. You get a lot of great information. You can kind of bop around into different virtual rooms and meet people and learn about programs and things like that. So it's definitely an experience worth having. And again, it's great for students and parents. And also, um, we normally go to the um, New England Association of um, College Admissions Counseling, also known as NEAC Act. Um, in May, we normally go to the, the Spring Fair. Um, obviously, we're not able to do that. Everything's virtual right now. So there are um, two more virtual fairs for NEAC Act coming up um, in mid-April and mid-May. So if you just look up, you know, New England um, Association of College Admissions Counseling or NEAC Act College Fairs, um, you will get the link for that. And I did email that to all of my juniors a couple of times. So if they're checking their emails, they should have that link. Excellent. And actually, I was just, as Amanda was saying that, I wanted to be sure to tell you as well but again, I know it can be intimidating to go up to a college rep or to think this person is forming an opinion of me. Really, all you're doing them by approaching them is impressing them. It's totally fine if you're nervous. It's totally fine if you're not sure what questions to ask. The important thing is taking that initiative. Okay, so they don't expect you to be perfect and perfectly polished because if you were, you wouldn't need to go to college. Um, they really want you at their college. So it's not about being perfect going in. It's just about kind of making that effort, showing that you're interested. Um, so that's really what you want to do at a college fair is just make sure you're introducing yourself, shake someone's hand, ask for their business card. Um, again, not virtually, but you will get a lot of great information virtually and you'll still be face to face with those same people. There are many different ways to piece together a college education these days. And more and more students are starting at community college for financial reasons, for a lot of reasons. And that's even if they plan to go on for a master's degree or a doctorate degree, because if you can live at home and go to River Valley and spend $6,500 a year, rather than UNH and spend $30,000 a year to live on campus, it's really something that students are looking at because they save so much money. And they've made it much easier to do these days than it has been in the past. It used to be that students would get their associate's degree at community college, 
and then hope most of those credits would transfer to a four-year school. But now they have programs, they have articulation agreements. So nhtransfer.org and dualnh.com are websites that will tell you more about that. But there are ways to just very smoothly do your two years at River Valley or Lakes Region or NHTI, and then go on to Keene, Plymouth, or UNH. After four years, you're getting the same degree as your friends who went there for four years. Um, so it's just one other thing to think about in this process. Many colleges have gone test optional as well, meaning it would be your choice as to whether or not you want to send them SAT scores. So fairtest.org is a great website that is going to tell you who those schools are. Um, so for students, we do suggest that you take the SAT again senior year, simply because statistically, you'll probably do a little bit better. Um, but there are going to be many colleges out there now where you don't have to send your scores if you choose not to. Every college is going to have accessibility services, academic services. So whether we're talking about a student with a 504 or an IEP, or whether we're just talking about a student who wants to make sure that there are systems in place for their academic success in college, again, the important thing to remember is it's the student advocating for themselves. Um, so when you're on a tour, when you're talking to college reps, you can ask what kind of academic services they have. And for the student, it's just a matter of being aware that as soon as you need help or if you need help, just to reach out to somebody, there's going to be study groups, there's going to be mentors, tutors, there will be things in place. So you just wanna find out what those are. We suggest that students apply to six to eight colleges and that's just a general number. Obviously it depends on your particular situation, but if you have a balance of in-state, out-of-state, public, private, now you apply to six schools, you get into four of them and two of them are affordable. So now you have a decision to make. So that's just something that you wanna think about. Considering the major, if you're interested in nursing, engineering, business, those are majors that tend to be highly competitive. And so sometimes they have earlier deadlines than the college itself. So for instance, applying for the nursing program at Keene State, or just applying to Keene State undeclared are two very different things. There's different deadlines, different testing, and that type of thing. So you just want to keep that in mind if you're interested in engineering, nursing, or a program like that at a particular school. Colleges give out financial aid for two reasons. There's two ways that they do it. So one is merit money. So if you're getting scholarship money from a school, it's because of grades or SAT scores or whatever, but the student has done something to earn that money. Grant money is free money based on family finances. So all colleges are gonna do that a little bit differently. All colleges also have net price calculators that will ask you questions about what your grades might look like, what your parents' income look like, and then it'll tell you what a financial aid package from that school could look like. So that's very helpful because if you're looking at a school that costs $70,000 a year, it would be really helpful to know that you might qualify for the presidential scholarship that's $35,000 a year or that your family might qualify for some grant money, um, things like that. So net price calculators will give you an idea of what the school will actually cost you rather than just looking at stick prices. So when I say apply to six schools and to take a balanced approach, that would be applying to two schools that you know you will get into academically and that you know is a good fit financially for your family. A target school would be a school where kind of on par with the students that are there now academically. Um, and therefore you might get a little bit of financial aid money, scholarship money, grant money, whatever. REACH schools absolutely have them on your list. You just wanna keep in mind that if you get into a REACH school, there might not be as much financial aid if it was a REACH for you. So again, keeping that balanced approach. The important thing that I've learned over the years in doing this presentation, because again, we also do counseling in our office, is that a safety school is actually three things. I used to look at it as two things, a college that you know you'll get into, in a college that you know you can afford. 
And so I have since added a third thing to my list because it also should be a college that you would go to. So I can't tell you how many times we have students who will just apply to what they consider a safety school just because it's easier it's easier than having that argument with mom who wants you to apply to that school. Um, but really it's important to have those conversations because if a year from now, that's one of the only schools you got into and it is the only school that's affordable and now your parents are saying, yay, great, aren't you so glad that you put that on your list? And you're thinking, I was never gonna go there. I'm not going there next year. That's a difficult conversation to be had. And those are the conversations I'm having with families over Zoom right now, um, seniors and their families. So having that conversation about what makes sense for students, that means really keeping an open mind. If you have preconceived notions of what our state schools are like or what our community colleges are like, I highly recommend you look into them with an open mind. We have an incredible system here in New Hampshire and there are a lot of opportunities. So you just wanna keep that in mind. When a college is looking at you, they are looking mostly at your high school transcript and it's not just about your grades, it's also about what classes you chose to take and what level those classes were. Another thing they're looking for is that you challenge yourself senior year. They don't want to see that you take took all of the hard classes up front, you kind of got everything over with so you could graduate and then senior year you took some easy classes. They're going to look at it that if you gave your brain the year off, how are you going to be ready for college? So they will be looking to see that the schedule you take senior year, the classes that you take are kind of on par with what you've been doing all along. If you apply using the Common App, which is what most colleges have right now and how you apply probably to at least some of your schools. There will be six or seven essay prompts and you can choose one. The last one is usually topic of your choice. So your college essay can literally be about anything. And really they're just looking to get a sense of your personality and learn a little bit about who you are. A college admissions counselor a few years ago really gave me a great perspective on this. He said, we already know what their accomplishments are from their application. We know what their grades are. We know all kinds of things about them, but we don't know if they'd be a good roommate. So really what they're looking for when they read your essay and what they're thinking is, is this somebody I could be roommates with in college? Okay, so again, it doesn't have to be the best thing they've ever read. It doesn't have to be about an accomplishment. It just has to show them a little bit about who you are. That's what they're looking for. With extracurricular activities, it's not just about what you do in school or what's school related. So great if you play sports or if you're in clubs, but if you don't because you have family responsibilities or a part-time job or things like that, they absolutely want to know about that as well because what they're looking for there it's just kind of some time management and responsibility. Okay, so they aren't putting a judgment necessarily on what those outside activities are. And as a matter of fact, one of the categories on there is family responsibilities because they realize that for some students, that is their part-time job or even a full-time job outside of school is either helping out with a family business or maybe babysitting siblings, that type of thing. So whatever your extracurricular activities are, that's what you'll put on the Common App. Letters of recommendation. A lot of colleges will want a letter of recommendation from your school counselor. Some may also want one from a teacher or two from a teacher, but most colleges are just asking for one letter of recommendation. And actually, Amanda, <laughs> I was going to say, or Tim, and I look down and you have the Amanda Shaw on your <laughs> screen as well. <laughs> So Amanda or Amanda, if you could maybe talk a little bit about your letters of recommendation. Yeah, so um, right now, um, we currently are, are using a program called, called Naviance, um, where um, that's where all of these application materials come from, um, as far as the things that what we send that us as counselors are responsible for sending. Um, so the process is that we always ask that, um, A, the student should pay attention to how many letters of recommendation they actually need. Um, because if, if a school is asking for only one or two letters and you send 
for um, or you request for, A, you're not following directions, so the school is going to notice that, and then B, you then just ask people to take time out of their busy lives to, to write you a letter of recommendation that you don't actually need. So it's really important to be um, aware of what the, you know, the requirements are um, as far as the applications and the letters of recommendation. So, so that's the first thing you want to be aware of how many actually need. Um, then we ask that you always ask um, whomever it is, either a teacher, um, your counselor, um, coach, if you know you need one from a coach or something in person. Um, obviously, you know right now it, it's a little bit difficult sometimes with in-person things, but um, personal is is always best. So making that first um, request for the letter um, in person. Um, and then following up with with an email, thanking them, um, reminding them, giving, letting them know, you know, what your deadlines are. Um, and then once they have agreed to write that letter for you, um, you know, requesting it um, via Naviance, which we go over, um, you know, in the beginning of um, senior year. We we always do what's called a, a college boot camp um, in August, right before school starts, and we go over a lot of that stuff um, with them. So, um, you know as juniors who are gonna be starting this process, um, we will most likely be doing some, um, you know, things with the juniors to talk about this before they go into the summer. We have different resources that we give before kids go off to the, sum to the summer um, to get them ready for this. But that's the process as far as, as letters go, is always in person first um, and then requesting them um, via Naviance right now. Um, yeah, so that's our process. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. Mm -hmm. So the last thing on the list here, the SAT or ACT scores, it's just important to remember that those would come from the company itself. So College Board is the SAT company. So if they are asking for that official score report, it would come from College Board. So you just want to remember that. So this is what next year will look like for you folks. And again, I will be back in the fall to talk about an awful lot of this. Right now, the important thing is to be checking out colleges virtually, in person, however it makes more sense for you, um, but just getting a sense of where you want to apply. If you go into September, October and have a, a sense of where you might be interested in going to college, you don't have to have decided, but maybe you've looked at five or six schools you'll be in a really good place. So in the fall, you'd be taking the SAT a second time if you're looking at schools that would require you to send an SAT score. Students that apply early decision or early action are really kind of jumping on that because those are usually due in November. Early decision is very different than early action. So if a student is applying early decision, it means they're signing a contract with the college and they would be required or they've signed a contract to go to the college if the college grants them admission. And a lot of times you won't have seen a financial aid award package from the college yet. So early action for some students makes a lot more sense. If you are that student that just wants to get things done early, get this over with, get everything out there, then absolutely apply early action. You'll find out earlier in the school year what schools you got into, but you'll still have just as much time to decide you haven't signed a contract, you, you aren't bound to anything. So early action, early decision, very different. And things at every college are gonna be very different in the sense that they all will have different application deadlines, different financial aid deadlines, they all want different things. So keeping track of all of that and especially deadlines is going to be important. I'll talk about the FAFSA briefly at the end, but that's the free application for federal student aid. So it's the financial aid stuff that will be available October 1st of your student's senior year. So you do not want to fill out a FAFSA before that. Sometimes people will go on September and say, aha, it was up. That means you're filling out the wrong year. So the one for your students and when they will be going into college will become available on October 1st. And then you're spending some of the winter months just making sure everything's completed, making sure that you're meeting deadlines. Students start to hear back from the colleges. So you find out what colleges you got into. And then usually two or three weeks later, you find out how much that college is going to cost you. So admissions makes their decision first. So they admit the student 
and then the paperwork goes to financial aid. So you're getting a letter saying, congratulations, you are in, and the financial aid office then is working on the financial aid package. And again, you'll get it a couple of weeks later. So seniors right now are starting to get that information together and starting to make decisions. And you'll be making a decision by May 1st. Um, so that's just something that you want to keep in mind. Next year will go quickly. Not all colleges are sticking with that May 1st deadline. Some of them certainly, because of the situation the last year or so, have made exceptions and are pushing that out a little bit. But again, you just wanna be aware of what your deadlines are. Springtime is also going to be scholarship season. Um, so it's gonna be really important to realize that in February and March of next year, there will be a little bit more work to do. And it's really important to take advantage of that because spring of your senior year is when there's money out there. That's when there's local scholarship money out there. And your school counselors do a great job of making sure you have that information. So just make sure you take advantage of the opportunity and fill out the scholarship applications in early spring. So the FAFSA, again, the free application for federal student aid is making some changes. So that's why I'm not going to get into it very deeply tonight because I still don't know what some of those changes are. I promise that I will when I come back in September or October. When you file the FAFSA in October, November of next year, it will look the same as it does now. Um, but the year after that, they are making changes. So you will be filing the FAFSA for every year that your student is in college. And because they're changing some of the terminology, it's just important, or I don't wanna confuse the issue with getting too far into it. But what will stay the same is basically, you put in information about your adjusted gross income. They're gonna come up with a number that they think represents your family's financial situation. And when colleges are looking at that number, that's what they use to decide who's going to get need-based money. So scholarship money has nothing to do with the FAFSA they're only looking at the FAFSA for need-based money. So that's what the colleges are looking at. There are some colleges that want more information than what's on the FAFSA. So the CSS profile is required by San Anselm and Dartmouth. Those are the only two schools in New Hampshire that ask for it. But Northeastern, BC, BU, the Ivy League schools, some of the more selective private schools in New England, there's I think 400 schools total that ask for the CSS profile. So you just wanna be aware that everyone will file the FAFSA and just check to see if you're going to have to file the CSS profile as well. All right, so I am going to stop sharing my screen. And Amanda, is there anything else that you wanted to, did you wanna talk about some Conan specific stuff or scholarships? You're muted, honey. You know, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> um, yeah, so like I said, we do, um, we always try to meet with students, you know, at least once before they go off um, after senior year into junior year. Um, you know, this year we're gonna try to do stuff more in groups, especially because we have that um, wonderful, we have that 30 minute mentoring time um, every day. So that's been a real big help with getting, um, you know, information to specific grade levels and whatnot. Um, and then we we do a lot, you know, beginning before school even starts um, with doing, we always offer multiple, um, we call them, you know, college boot camps where we start kids, you know, if they haven't set up their common app yet, we help them with that, um, you know, help them to know where to find, how to ask, you know, request the letters and Naviance, go over all of that with them. Um, and so with the scholarships, um, Rebecca has been doing a great job of making sure that the current seniors know, you know, any scholarship that comes, um, you know, through our office and, you know, emails them to the students as well as posts them in our, our office for, for students with pa for paper copies. And then we also have just started our local scholarships. We have a very generous community um, and we have a ton of um, local committees that, that donate um, money to just Conant students. Um, there's a lot of money out there to be had. So the seniors have just started that. So um, 
you know, for any juniors out there, you'll be doing that this time next year. And we do a boot camp for that as well, where we go over that process with them and help them, you know, give them tips for staying organized with that, because that can be a very tedious process. Um, so there's lots and lots of help. The biggest thing is um, checking your email, checking announcements, making sure that you're communicating with your school counselor, um, especially in from like, you know, September, October through um, right before the holidays, making sure that you're you're communicating with your school counselor on the beginning of your senior year and frequently meeting with them as much as you need to, to make sure that they know where you're at um, and that, you know, you know what you should be doing as well. So um, yeah, that's basically it. All right, and this is being recorded. Um, so if you did miss some of it, Amanda will have the recording for you and we'll get that out to people. And you can always give me a call. Our information is on every slide of the PowerPoint that you just saw. And I will make sure that Amanda has a copy of that as well. Are there any other questions or anything before we you can put them in the chat if you want? Let's look at that. We're good. Thank you, though. No questions. <laughs> sure. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone so much for coming, uh, for watching this tonight. Um, and hope you all have a great evening.